And thank you everyone for coming along this evening, um, councillors and staff and uh, members of the community. Thank you Chris uh, for highlighting the many benefits that have come from council's decision to invest in this magnificent community facility and congratulations on your appointment as Chief Executive Officer of the Goldfields Library Corporation. We look forward to great things happening out of this venue. The award-winning Bendigo Library provides an attractive and accessible place that is already finding great favour with an increased number of users. The completion of this project is certainly one of the highlights of 2013-14. Um, and thank you for coming here this evening um, to listen to this presentation on the City of Greater Bendigo Annual Report for 2013-14. And as you can see from the video presentation, we've had a very busy and productive year. And so much of that is based around people, um, people providing services for people in our community. And that's one of the most important things that we do. It is worth noting that from the outset, um, 2014 marks 20 years since amalgamation of local councils in Victoria. Two decades on, we're a confident, vibrant and progressive community aspiring to be, Bendigo, sorry, to be Australia's most livable regional city. Greater Bendigo, including Bendigo City and the many towns and communities that make up our municipality, has grown to become the second largest regional centre in Victoria with a population heading towards 110,000 people. We are the third largest concentrated economic base in Victoria with an annual gross regional product of over $5.1 billion. The giant cranes dominating our skyline as work progresses on the building of the new Bendigo Hospital and the Alumbra Theatre stand as strong and tangible symbols of our success. We are the envy of all other regional cities in Victoria. There is no doubt that 2013-14 was a year of significant achievement for the City of Greater Bendigo. Excellent progress has been made on implementing the independent review recommendations with 34 of the 69 recommendations completed and work progressing on many others. Changes arising from these recommendations are making further improvements to the ways the city conducts its activities, including greater transparency, better decision making and improved processes. In 2013-14, planning for growth remained a top priority and significant progress was made in developing the new residential development strategy that will set the guidelines for future land use and the integrated transport and land use strategy that will be the blueprint for future transport needs, particularly the movement of freight and people. Our planning department issued 1,163 planning permits during the year for developments worth almost $221 million. The rapid growth we are experiencing has significant implications on day-to-day -day service delivery. More rubbish is generated and must be collected. More roads, footpaths and drains are needed and must be maintained along with existing ones. Many visitors to Greater Bendigo remark on the attractive look and feel of our city and this is something we should all be proud of. The city is responsible for 310 passive recreation reserves. 70 sporting reserves, 170 natural reserves and 20 heritage and formal gardens. We are responsible for 800 public buildings and structures valued at almost $350 million. In addition to ongoing maintenance, many of these buildings and facilities must be upgraded to comply with more, recently, more recent accessibility requirements. We are very fortunate to have the legacy of such a beautiful setting and great facilities, but keeping public areas across the municipality well maintained, safe and visually attractive requires a significant ongoing investment in infrastructure and the people who do the work. The services we delivered in 2013-14 continued to be many and varied. For example, the city collected over 28,000 tonnes of garbage from 45,836 residential properties and over 10,400 tonnes of recyclables. These collection services operate across the 3,000 square kilometres of our municipality. We planted almost 34,000 trees, shrubs and grasses, constructed 17 kilometres of new roads 
and resealed 70 kilometres of existing roads. Constructed 26 kilometres of curb and channel, 23 kilometres of footpaths and 28 kilometres of drainage. We administered over 12,200 vaccinations for children, provided over 98,000 hours of home and community care services, provided over 38,000 meals through our Meals on Wheels program. Our customer support team dealt with almost 98,000 calls from the public. Our communications team received 935 inquiries from the media and issued 455 media releases. We increased our levels of community engagement providing, by providing more community sessions, surveys and information directly to residents. The City continued to develop our social media pages as a means of providing information to our community, with over 1,200 posts on Facebook and 1,600 tweets on Twitter. And that's something we wouldn't have been talking about a few years ago. At the end of the financial year, we had 2,234 likes on Facebook and 2,288 followers on Twitter. Our website remained a key source of information with a record almost 490,000 visits to bendigo.vic.gov.au. The previous year, we had just over 400,000 visits to the site. The city also continued to play an important role in advocating for new development opportunities. We coordinated 27 business development and improvement workshops, up from eight in 2012-13, and conducted 79 business development events. In addition to delivering the redevelopment of the Bendigo Library, the City also completed a significant expansion at the Bendigo Art Gallery, another major highlight, and work is progressing as planned on the 1,000 seat Alumbra Theatre. We invested in these projects in partnership with state and federal governments because they improve the livability of our city, providing great art and cultural opportunities for our community for many years to come. They will also generate significant economic activity, which means jobs and investment. Everything we do relies on prudent financial management and I am pleased to report that the city continues to be in a strong financial position. While debt levels have increased over the past couple of years, they continue to be closely managed. At June 30, our debt balance was $29.4 million and remained, mo remained modest when compared with the City's total asset base of $1.3 billion. The City's total revenue for the year was in excess of $173 million and the City reported a surplus operating result of $20.4 million. This included non-monetary contributions, which is new roads, drains and footpaths, which are basically donated to the city um, as a result of new developments and then are our responsibility for the future maintaining. Um, a total of $19.6 million worth and capital grants of $6.7 million. Capital expenditure was $40.9 million. Cash and other current assets at June 30 was $61.8 million. 28.4 of the city's cash is considered restricted in that it represents reserves and trust funds council is holding. As you saw before, rate revenue was 86.4 million and rates continue to represent about half of our total revenue. Looking forward, there are a number of challenges that must be addressed if we are to become Australia's most livable regional city. We need to improve our health and wellbeing and while council does have some responsibility here, so do other levels of government, as well as our community. Section of our community remain disadvantaged, and together we must ensure that they have fair access to services and opportunities. We also have a collective responsibility to make sure that the high proportion of our population that lives alone, or with one other, have access to housing that meets their needs. Over the next 12 months, Council will continue to play our part in ensuring Greater Bendigo can be the most livable regional city in Australia. But we cannot do this alone, and we would encourage everyone here tonight to play their part. This has only been a very brief summary of um, some of the great City of Greater Bendigo achievements for 2013-14. I encourage you all to have a read of this annual report. Um, this is a significant document, and there's a lot of detail in here that I haven't even touched the surface on. 
So please um, take a copy with you tonight, browse through it um, over the next little while, um, and you'll see what great things we're doing as a, as a council, as a significant player in our community, um, and really just try to, to make sure this is a great community in which to live and that people want to come and visit this region. I'll take this opportunity to thank the Mayor and Councillors for their significant and dedicated efforts over the year. And we shouldn't ever underestimate the time and effort, effort that councillors put in to their role. So thank you, councillors and Mayor. Um, to the great staff of, uh, that work for the City of Greater Bendigo, thank you for your dedication and commitment to the organisation and, importantly, for the work that you do for the community in providing services every day and delivering important projects uh, that are very much needed by the people who live in our municipality. I am very proud to be the Chief Executive Officer of this organisation, which has so many dedicated and committed staff, so thank you all. And we cannot underestimate the f fantastic contribution made by hundreds of volunteers who assist in the delivery of direct service to residents and visitors. They are so valuable to our community. Again, we thank them sincerely for their efforts. So thank you again, everyone, for attending this evening. Um, it is only a very quick snapshot of our, some of our achievements. Um, please take time to read the annual report, and thank you.